You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I'm David George Brooke, your host, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can expect a deeper dive into gratitude's immense power, a gratitude tip of the show, or maybe a gratitude nugget. Uh, how you can become a gratitude believer, and maybe one or two or three takeaways from today's show. My podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. It is downloaded to the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and where anywhere else you get your podcasts. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I do appreciate that. And to purchase a gratitude journal, a lot of people ask me about that. And to find out more about my gratitude speaking and coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com or thatgratitudeguypodcast.com. So let me get on to the show. And my favorite part is having my guests every week. And this week, Lisa White. Let me tell you a little bit about Lisa. Lisa is a holistic IVF fertility coach, intuitive healer, speaker, and author of the number one best-selling book, Hold On Baby. She has a 20 plus year background as an occupational therapist, is a certified Reiki practitioner and manifest manifestation expert. Lisa guides women around the world with a unique mind plus body plus spirit framework, helping individuals thrive and navigate through the emotional roller coaster of IVF. She feels it's possible to experience more joy in this journey and stay empowered through the ups and downs without losing oneself along the way. She believes her IVF soul align method is what personally helped lead her to her own success, achieving motherhood through IVF with only one healthy embryo. She lives in Denver, Colorado with her husband, Jason, and daughter, Olivia. Lisa, welcome to the show. Wow, thank you, David. This is awesome to be here. <laughs> it's always nice. And I always, for whatever reason, start off the show to give the listeners context. How did you and I meet? Oh, we met through a mastermind um, and an amazing group of individuals through Ellen Elkomore, who praise her. She's wonderful. I've been working with her in the past on um, a few projects. And so she brought us all together through a LinkedIn mastermind group, super tight group. <laughs> yeah, super tight. I like that name. And it's so cool because the word that I use, I can't think of a better one is like-minded. And so just like how I met you and you get into these groups and you, you're there for a reason to do training or whatever it might be, but then you notice that the other people that are similar to you, uh, gosh, you think, oh, I got to talk to her. I got to have a Zoom call with mm -hmm. him or her or whatever. And it's just really neat because there's a lot of knuckleheads in this world, in my opinion. And when you meet people that have the same alignment, it's really, really fun. So, so speaking of the same alignment, walk us back a little bit and talk about, I certainly want the main function or main focus I want to have is on your work and, mm -hmm. and especially the IVF aspect, but let's walk us back and talk about your, your sort of your journey as it started out, maybe around college days to where you got to here and how you got there and how you planned that and how that worked for you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Taking me way back. <laughs> uh, so early on, I always wanted to be in a health profession, helping individuals. I considered physical therapy. And then after meeting some individuals, got exposed to occupational therapy, pursued, pursued that route. And I'm so grateful that I have been in that profession for now over 20 years. And although it's not my main job right now, it has been um, such a huge part of my life, the foundation of, you know, kind of the mindset that I've carried through life where um, it's helped me tap into the understanding the power of gratitude even more when you see people who are kind of at their lowest. Um, I've worked with the very young to the very old. And um, so pursuing that profession is something I started back gosh, <laughs> 95 when I graduated from high school and uh, always knew, you know, this is something I wanted to pursue to help individuals and got into occupational therapy school after starting at Colorado State. I transferred to Creighton University and um, had some internships in some amazing places, did one in the Dominican Republic, um, 
have had tons of really cool experiences and moved out to San Diego to start my career working with children at a children's hospital, working um, in nursing facilities, kind of have pivoted in a lot of different ways in my work, working, like I said, with young children in the school setting, hospital setting, then moving into skilled nursing facilities, hospitals, and even home health. Um, so yeah, so I, I developed at a young age um, a real appreciation for, for one's health and wellness and finding those things. Occupational therapy is something that may, maybe people don't really know about, but it's a holistic health profession all about helping individuals do what they really want to do in life to enhance their quality of life. So if you've had, say, a stroke, for example, and you want to be able to play your favorite instrument again, or you know, you haven't been able to get yourself dressed or um gosh, just the simple, simple things that we take for granted, going to the bathroom, all of those daily things. Like I've had a real firsthand look at that up close. And, um, you know, I'm just so grateful that I did have that profession to carry me through other challenges in life. And fast forward to, uh, gosh, in 2015, my husband and I were confronted with fertility challenges. And I really thank my background having a holistic background, you know, as, a, as an occupational therapist to really understand the importance of the mind, the body, and the spirit as it carries you through really hard things. Um, at that time, I was also struggling with seeing my mom's kind of health decline. She's had a, she had a long standing health condition, respiratory condition. And I felt um, really fortunate to be able to draw upon you know, strengths from my life experience, from my profession, from the, I call it my miracle mindset that I've <laughs> kind of lived throughout my whole life and, and um, looking at what's possible and expecting good things to happen and know that they will. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of pieces to this. I'm giving you just the high level, but that's okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm so fortunate that, yeah, I had a wonderful profession that supported me through fertility struggles and now getting to serve others, I, I've looked to the, the, the challenges that I've had to support others through this really hard time. And I became a fertility coach specializing and, in- And Lisa, the, the miracle mindset, how would you break that down into its components? What hmm. makes up that miracle mindset? It's looking at the world with a unique set of eyes where you are open and you're you're kind of brave and bold and courageous. It's, it's knowing that miracles are everywhere. And if you're paying attention and open to them, they will show up in your life. I mean, I can share a few examples. Um, gosh, I, <laughs> I always wanted to play volleyball in college. I, I believed that I could do it. I sent a video into the coach. I was a walk-on to play division one volleyball, just knowing like okay, miracle mindset. Like I can do this. I'm going to do this. Um, at Colorado state, when I was there for my first three years of college, I wanted to, um, I saw an opportunity to work at Disney world for a college internship and applied. They happened to be on campus the day I saw this like flyer. And I said, yeah, I'm going to go for it. And I went, I interviewed and I, and I got that gig and I got to work at Disney world for a whole summer. Right. It's just like this miracle mindset of going for it. Um, I've even had really cool experiences where I got to be on the Ellen show with her, her 12 days of giveaways and was in the audience when she announced to the whole audience, like, Hey, surprise, you all get to come back for this 12 days of giveaways. You know, so I got to go see her twice. And I mean, it was just a thrilling moment. Right. And just feeling in the vibration that good things are always coming your way, even with like the simple things of like, um, front row parking, right. Like that kind of stuff, right. Just knowing that, that good things are available, that they're on their way to you. So it's, it's well, a vibration. And, and to me, you're kind of describing a gratitude mindset. I always describe mm -hmm. it as focusing on what you have versus what you don't have. Like you said, even mm -hmm. a parking space that's up front or what have you. Yeah. Another one of my pet sayings is, is uh, gratitude turns what you have into enough. And we all meet people that just seem to have this positive, sunshiny type outlook and then other people's that are very negative. Mm -hmm. I mentioned in my talks about my father was very negative. It was always discouraging to me, no matter what I said, he'd always tell me what was wrong with it or what the downer was. And it kind of, it goes in line, aligned with this question I've had in my whole life that I've never gotten really answered is I don't understand why people don't take better care of themselves. It's just, it's never 
made sense to me. And then they, they smoke and then they need new lungs or they do this or their heart and they need a heart transplant. But it's kind of also back to the miracle mindset where the reason I was curious about that is because that's a case where that's a choice that you get to make it is. every day. You get up out of bed, left side or right side, whatever it might be, that's a choice. And you made that choice to see those things. And so when you were mentioning back to, in fact, that makes me think back to occupational therapy, I would imagine whether it's the children's hospital up to when you're talking about strokes, that's typically an older person. So that mm-hmm. wide range, I would imagine the attitude of those people made a huge difference of how oh, their success was. Everything, everything. I mean, yes, you're so right. When you have that attitude of gratitude, like it just enhances your well being. Um, you're in a much better state <laughs> mm-hmm. to move forward through really hard things. So, yes, I mean, yeah, yeah, it makes such a difference. And then, so I want to, I want to move into the IVF portion. And I was thinking it wasn't IVF in my situation, but it was just trying to get my wife pregnant. And we had a really tough time because she had had her tubes tied. And for me, once she married me, she'd been married previously, she had her tubes untied. And we find out later that only one really took only one fallopian tube was working. But gosh, it took us, I don't know, a year, year and a half. And we finally, fortunately, got pregnant and had our son, Connor, who is now 27. But I just remember that struggle. And this is not even close, in my opinion, to what it's like to go through IVF and some of those things. But talk about that journey for you and for people and how that kind of works. Oh, my goodness. Well, for those that don't know, IVF in vitro fertilization, it's, it's a form of assisted reproductive technology. But one in eight couples are needing, <laughs> they're, they're, one in eight couples, I should say, are going through fertility struggles. It's, it's really common. Um, and IVF is one route to go um, based on our personal situation. When we started with the testing and we'd been trying for a little over a year and I was in my later thirties, um, my husband in his early, early mid forties. So based on some testing, um, they told us IVF was the route for us to go. And we knew that right off the bat. And I think that's really critical for anyone who's struggling to conceive, having a good clinic doctor, all of that to to start you off on the right foot, Mm -hmm. to have good information and have a plan, um, kind of rule out there's different avenues, you know, to go, but it was really helpful to know, okay, this was the route for us to go. Um, I also knew that I had some polyps in my uterus that needed to be taken out. So that was, um, something we also know we would have to do, but yeah, the, the process is very in depth, very, (laughs) very science-based, very medical. And, um, I'll share with you later too, but I just took a, such a different approach going through IVF and I trusted the medical team to handle that medical side where I, I focused on more the inner journey, the feminine kind of energy, spiritual side of this ride. That's not often talked about, Mm -hmm. but as we were going through this, um, we started out, we had to have an egg retrieval. So that's how they collect the eggs. Um, They fertilize the eggs. And after our first round of egg retrievals and that testing, um, we had four embryos and none of them were healthy. None of them were viable after the genetic testing, which I also think that's really valuable to do for individuals who are going down this path. But we decided to go through another egg retrieval. You know, I mean, picking ourselves up after that heartbreak was devastating to to learn like, okay, we're going to go through this egg retrieval stage again. And we got three embryos and only one of those tested to be genetically healthy. Oh, wow. One embryo. So froze the embryo, moved forward, had my polyp surgery. About three months later, they went back to test to make sure everything was like looking good. And I had scar tissue, scar tissue that had formed one embryo frozen, one embryo holding on for us. Kind of that's where hold on baby. You can kind of (laughs) understand where that book title comes from, but, um, had scar tissue surgery, had another setback where my doctor left the practice. Wow. Had another setback where I was getting closer to our embryo transfer and they found blood in my uterus, which halted our transfer, canceled that new doctor. He identified, I had some fibroids that had formed and that's a, that's an element of the gratitude piece where I'm so thankful for things like that, that showed up because I really think it helped us avoid a potential pregnancy loss or miscarriage. Mm. Um, so those fibroids were a blessing in a way I had those removed, moved forward. And almost a year later had our embryo transfer with our one and she's now almost four years old. So, so wow. great. Yeah. Boy, a lot of, a lot of obstacles down that road. A lot. And when you talk about that, I, whether it's IVF or that, all those things you went through in the, mm-hmm. the polyps and the various things, what's kind of been Lisa's best coping mechanism 
to maybe as you hit each one of those hurdles you had to overcome, what was kind of your best coping mechanism? That's quite a long journey. And I'm sure you left out a number of other things too, but the things you went through to get where you are now, what was Mm -hmm. the biggest thing that kind of helped you along the way? Uh, Focusing on really extreme self-care, being mindful of taking care of myself. I had to um, nurture myself like never before, you know, Um, mindset is a big piece of this too. So what were the thoughts I was thinking? What, what was the energy I was going to bring to this journey? Um, how did I want to feel? I was, I was in that space of choosing and knowing I had power. I was in, I was staying empowered through this path and I didn't let external influences really get to me. Um, outside of the fertility struggles I was going through, I was seeing my mom's health decline as well. And that was like one of the hardest times of my life. So getting through that, those really difficult times. I mean, I was journaling, journaling was something I was doing to help me to release, to, to cry, to feel all the emotions. I am a deeply feeling person and, um, not afraid to show that. So I was very in tune with like allowing myself to feel it all and to still hold that intention of, you know, this is working out for me. That's part of, part of my milk miracle mindset. You know, um, this is all working out for me in the best possible way. So it, there's a lot of different pieces. It's hard to think of just one, sure. um, but placing trust that I was going to make it through this. And I was definitely not going to lose myself through this. Oftentimes I see many individuals who have, I mean, our, our journey with one embryo and one transfer, Some may look at that as really easy. We had many setbacks, but there are a lot of individuals who have years and years and many cycles of where it doesn't work out. So I'm aware that I was going to give everything into this and to stay aligned and whole. So so Lisa, is that really the IVF soul align method? Is that really the elements you're describing? I kind of assume. Yes. Yes. Having, you know, having an awareness of what I could control through this ride. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it pains me to hear so many individuals say, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can control. And I don't believe that. I think there's no. so much we can, we can like focus on the gratitude. We can focus on, um, gosh, I mean, there's just a million things, our emotions, our thoughts, like I'm going to keep living my life fully and staying in a space of appreciation of knowing that my body is going to lead me and carry me through this. Um, my heart, you know, look to the higher, higher self, higher power, whatever you believe. I believe that there's always other supports out there that are helping no, guide us. I, I agree with you. And I think that there's, I, I, again, when I said, I, I don't understand why people don't take better care of themselves. I just mm-hmm. also don't understand why some people have such a positive attitude and some negative and really mm-hmm. negative. And I've decided I've become very comfortable being on the planet all these decades with the answer being, I don't know. Because I just think there's some things I don't know. I can't figure it out. But I've had people say I've, I've had some success. And I heard years ago, if you want to have success at something, find somebody that's having the success that you want and then do what they do. Yeah. So it'd be natural, like when people ask me about the gratitude journal or whatever it might be. And I always talk about my formula for success, which is you know sleep and exercise and good nutrition, my vitamins, lots of water, hanging out with positive people, gratitude journal, things like that. There's probably six, eight, 10 things. But I'll tell somebody that, well, I don't have time for that, or that wouldn't work for me, or whatever. And that you don't understand. <laughs> Just go, That's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Whatever you want to try. But when somebody is getting success, it's really important. And you mentioned something else, too, or actually, I saw it, too, that I really kind of liked that had this uh, the three key steps to soulfully being aligned. And so I want you to just kind of touch on both of those or the three of those. And the first one was setting your atten- intention. I thought that was really good. Walk, talk us through that a little bit. Yeah, having um, a a focus of what you're aiming for. You know, I'm intending that this process is going to go smoothly. I am intending that I'm going to be a mother. You know, I think I knew deep down I was going to be a mother in one way or another, however that baby was going to come to me. So it's kind of like setting, having a roadmap in a way, like from starting from point A, like set your intention, have something that you, um, you're, you're setting that desire out, but you're also letting it go. So that's really key is just, I believe in, um, that we kind of, we create our life. So what do I, what do I intend for myself? What do I intend for this journey? 
Mm-hmm. Excellent. That's, and that really makes sense. I've been a pilot for many, many years, and we just wouldn't think of uh, with leaving without having a flight plan. And so yeah. it kind of reminds me of a flight plan. We're going to take off here. We're going to land there. We're going to get gas there. We're going to go this route and so on and so forth. So, so that really makes sense. And, and I yeah. just love that get clear and grounded. It says, uh, number two, examine your current narrative. Talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, I I advise people to pay attention to the thoughts that they're thinking and what are the words you're telling yourself? Are you telling yourself that this journey has to be hard and painful and that the struggle is real? I hate that. (laughs) I hate that phrase. Um, I I believe it can be one of more magic, more flow, more ease. And that's, that was part of the energy that I was putting into this, into this journey, um, more being, being instead of doing, Mm. um, there's so much of this masculine energy going through this journey and people think they need to do more. And, um, it, it's just, let's take it back and just be, be. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, those words and the energy they they have a weight to them. And if we are putting out the vibe that, Oh, um, there's nothing I can control They're Like, this is all happening to me. No, it can be happening for you. So mm-hmm. it's just looking at things from a different angle. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I like that. And then number three, let it go. I like that too. Oh That's everything. That's everything on this journey. The surrendering, <laughs> surrender and um, still holding on to your intention, but detaching from the outcome, letting go of how this is all going to unfold. I, I believe that's where the magic shows up when we do release our hold on something. I mean, I wanted to be a mom so badly, but I was very aware, like, you, you let it go. You give it space to breathe <laughs> and more magic can show up more opportunities, the right supports that all draws to you when you're in a space of not trying to force it a certain way. Right. And I've always thought it was really, maybe it's overanalyzing things a little bit too much, but just to really wonder why some people ultimately have success and some don't. And again, mm-hmm. I think so much of it goes back to the attitude and that's where I, I just think in many cases, we get a lot of our attitudes and things from our birth parents. And if we won the birth lottery and, and then mm-hmm. there's coaches and mentors and teachers and different people that impact us along the way. But also I think sometimes it's just sort of in the person to have maybe a, a bubbly or a, a positive attitude. And then we are going to get, we are going to have this baby and it's going to work out. And mm-hmm. did you ever notice that there was some alignment between that, the people that ultimately had success versus maybe the ones that didn't, that you can maybe trace it back to their attitude or at least from what you could see? Yeah, I think um, individuals beliefs about this process, it's, it's important for each individual to really sit with that. And what do you believe? Do you believe that IVF can work for you? For example, I mean, if you're already in the mindset of it's going to take us multiple rounds, like, why are we putting that out there already? Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So limiting beliefs are a big one. I think um, when, when I help individuals get so fully aligned, that's one of the areas that we address or what are your beliefs about this journey? What do you Mm. believe is true for you? Because if you're already starting off in that mindset of, um, I don't know if I'll ever be a mother or I don't know if I'm worthy or it's like, how will it come to you? If you're kind of already creating those blocks or those, mm, that misalignment, I should say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, by getting in a space where you can be open and be open to receive. And, um, a lot of individuals are type a (laughs) on this path too, right. They're trying to, trying to control it all. (laughs) This is something we really can't force. We can't make this happen. We, We can allow it to happen. We can step into a space to receive. So yeah, I think limiting beliefs, addressing those early on is very, very key. Um, and any, everything is energy. I believe that we're energetic beings and, I do work with chakras with individuals, you know, chakra readings, um, helping people really open up and realize where there could be misalignment, where they may not be allowing things to flow in a more kind of natural, not natural, but like um, open, open way. Well, and I think also too, with people that go through any kind of challenge in life or personal or professional, whatever it might be, I've always been fascinated by, I look back at my life and I noticed when I had problems and challenges that I faced, if I just stuck with them, no matter how long it took, if I stuck with them, it finally got accomplished and it finally got solved. Whereas if I walked away from it, I've always joked about it, it's still on the shelf going, I'm over here. I'm still mm-hmm. the problem over here. And so it pays because sometimes you'll have this really feeling of 
dissatisfaction because you never really stuck with it. And I think that if you look back, I think most people, certainly the people that I communicate with a lot, they, the challenge, if they just stuck with it, everything ultimately gets solved. Sometimes it just takes, I mean, it's, there's just certain days you wake up and you feel like you can conquer the world and other days you feel like you want to go back to bed. So it, it just maybe depends on making sure you, you get up enough days to you get to that point where you can conquer the world and then you can solve those problems. But I would certainly think IVF and, and, and just having a child is, is along that line too, especially as a parent myself and you and I are both parents, mm -hmm. knowing the miracle of having a child and how it's just I, I, I've often said, knowing what I know now, I, I would have had four or five kids looking mm -hmm. back on it. I just love being a dad so much. Yeah, this path is so personal. And I don't really subscribe to the mindset of never give up because there are some points, I think, along this ride where some people just need to pause and they decide they want to go a different route. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are many people who will try IVF or I've heard of individuals for 10 rounds and oh, it's wow. very, very expensive. I mean... I have in some, in the fertility community, there's a really strong community on Instagram. I'm a, I'm a big part of all of it. And it's, I've seen individuals who have struggled for years who are having their, their babies, you know, I mean, it, I can't say it works for everybody, right? Like we don't know how long this road can go. It's, mm -hmm. it's a test of perseverance, resilience. Like how much do you want to keep going through this process? Um, some people decide they want to go maybe the route of donor egg donor sperm, donor embryo. Um, and they decide they're going to move away from their own genetics through this. So there's a pivot. Maybe they pivoted to accept a different route. Some then pivot, maybe they need a surrogate and some maybe then want to also adopt. So there's so many routes. I always believe if you want to be a parent, you're going to be a parent in one way or another. Um, it's just IVF. It's hard to say, you know, I don't want people to think it's their own doing that. This right. isn't, there are, there are medical issues that sometimes we just don't understand fully. Well, and I guess what I'm thinking too is I, I for some reason was just focusing yeah. on IVF, but I guess maybe the bigger picture, don't give up on becoming a parent. As you said, there are many, many different routes you can yes. go. Yes. And it's just, um, I, I still I'm trying to think if this is appropriate for a podcast, but I remember uh, trying to get pregnant and having uh, Dana go, okay, let's go. We have to go right now. We have it. We have, I'm, what is it? I'm, I'm uh, ovulating. Uh, ovulating. Whatever, yeah. Thank you. Anyway, we get, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not ready. I, I don't, you know, it's like, it's so funny. And it's like yeah. such a different context. Now oh. is that about having a baby, you know? And so it's oh. just so different, but whatever route you go. And I certainly think that um, I hope I can speak for most of us that are parents in this world, that you just can't mm -hmm. imagine anything more important. I've done a lot of crazy things in my life and nothing I'm more proud of than being a father and being a parent to two incredible sons. And in the end, I have friends of mine that don't have kids and I, I will always have a piece of me that feels sorry for them. They won't oh. know what that's like to be a parent. Oh. And I want to speak though, for those individuals who choose to live child-free, there are mm -hmm. a lot of individuals who choose that yes. route. And I can't say like one route is better than the other. I I'm so happy to be a parent and it's amazing. It's changed my life in so many ways, but I truly believe like not everyone has that desire on their heart to be a right. parent. And I respect, right. you know, they find other fulfill fulfillment in their life in other ways. So, yeah. yeah. And that's a great point too, because I think you're exactly right. And, and I think about the people that have chosen to be parents and then God forbid the children are abused and these, and these bad things that happen to children. And I feel like, are they ignored or they're shuffled off to schools and nannies and all these things. And I think, well, then why did you even have a child then? You know, cause as you say, it's, it's a choice. And if somebody goes, it's a, it's one of the great things about the freedoms we have is you get to make all these choices uh, within legal bounds and so forth. And so you're absolutely correct. If that's the choice you make, that's fantastic. I would say for you and certainly for me, we're yeah. sure happy, sure happy with the choices that we made. And it's yeah. just, Sure. such a fulfillment and so forth. And, and I just wanted to touch on, we'll wrap up in about three, four minutes and just kind of on the book, hold on baby. I'm sure we've talked about a number of things around that, but, but can you kind of summarize the book for those that might be interested in buying it? Yeah. Thank you. Um, this is my book, hold on baby. <laughs> it's a soulful guide to writing the ups and downs of infertility and IVF. It's very personal. It's, it's my story of how I got through IVF, really empowered and connected to myself, how I held on through the ups and the downs, dealing with all the setbacks. And I share a lot about my mom. I haven't touched upon that a lot in this talk, but my mom was very influential in helping me with my mindset of appreciation of the little things of um, moving forward through hard things in life. And she did get to meet our daughter. Um, so I, I do share 
a lot about her in this book. I um, touch upon the method that I created and I break down a lot of themes around not putting your life on hold, still doing the things that light you up and bring you joy, um, tuning inward, tuning into the spiritual supports that are in this journey and in life, really any challenge. I've had friends that have read this book who have not gone through fertility challenges, but even like the times we're living in through right now with COVID, I feel like going through infertility and dealing with COVID are very similar. So mm -hmm. those themes of still finding your tribe, finding a community connection, um, again, finding the joy in life, those, those kind of themes are so key. Um, how do we deal with uncertainty? How do we deal with writing through the unknown? Um, I address all of that and the unique mindset that I used going through this journey. Um, I give a lot of practical strategies as well for those going specifically through IVF and excellent. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very practical um, book we'll from my heart. Yeah. Excellent. Practical strategies, I think is so important because it's one mm -hmm. thing to read a book I've, I've said too, it's like, I watch as a speaker, I watch a lot of speakers and pick up techniques mm -hmm. and tips and things. And, but I'm always fascinated about, I'll listen to a speaker and think, oh, what a great talk. But then the next day I can't remember anything. Oh. So when you have practical strategies, that really means those are good takeaways that the person can read from the book and get so forth. And, and speaking of takeaways, let me just mention a couple of the things that I noted from what you were talking about when you mentioned everything is energy. But these are some of the takeaways that I have is that I like this term focus on extreme self-care. I don't think I've ever heard that in mm. that term. And I'm a big believer in self-care. As I said, I don't understand why people don't take care, better care of themselves, but uh, focus on mindset, uh, would be aware of your thoughts, journaling along the way, placing trust, don't lose yourself in the process. I thought mm. that was really excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. And live in the space of appreciation, which is certainly gratitude and yes. being grateful and so forth. But um, mm -hmm. those are really helpful. So, well, let me ask you one last question as we wrap up. And I so appreciate you being on the podcast. Yeah. And that's still my favorite question is, is what do you know today that you would like to know in at 18 that would have helped you? Mm. Mm. I think that we, when we put trust in the unfolding of our journey, like that's really the key thing is to just know that things will unfold in the ma most magical way. When we don't try to plan it all out, when we keep being led by our heart, intuitively being guided. Um, I know like I never anticipated at 18, I would be here, you know, having gone through fertility struggles, to become an IVF fertility coach supporting women around the world. I mean, it is a dream come true to be in this place where, gosh, I look back and it all really did fall into place. Um, but at 18, right? Like, gosh, I was embarking on my adventure in my profession. And I think um, the more we just kind of follow, follow what, where our heart leads us, just take that next step, take that next step. Um, it, it can be really magical, you know, when we just trust in the unfolding of our journey. I think that's what I would say. <laughs> that's very good. And I really think I see that kind of as kind of as a belief system, just having that belief, you know, mm -hmm. that's going to be out there. I, I've always thought about those previews of coming attractions in the movies where the person's walking down the stairway and they step out before the next stairways even appeared, you know, oh. the next stair step and having that belief right. that step will be there and so forth. So Excellent. Right. Well, this has been very valuable. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you, and, David. <laughs> bad. And so that's it for this episode. So a couple of reminders, as I mentioned earlier, my podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, or Google. And please subscribe to me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. And as I said earlier, I appreciate that. To purchase a gratitude journal and to find out more about my gratitude speaking, coaching groups, and or one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. Also, if you'd like to receive my Monday morning minute, a lot of people like to get that. You can just simply text gratitude guy to 22828. That's in the message box, gratitude guy. And the number is 22828. And that's a 60-second video message that goes out every Monday morning. And also as an exclusive to my podcast listeners, I'm offering my three month proprietary gratitude coaching program for the regular price plus one extra month. So just email and let me know you heard about that on the podcast and I'll get you signed up. So finally, that is it for this episode. Thank you again for tuning in. I am David George Brooke, that gratitude guy. And remember, 
be grateful, and never quit. So long. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us. And you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.